Undoubtedly America's leading expert in the business of sports, Rick Haro has been the architect of more than 103 deals worth over $13 billion in sports, entertainment, and infrastructure projects in the U.S. in the past few years. Haro is the consummate negotiator, and he thrives in the high-octane world where big business, big politics, and big sports meet. All righty, so the big question is, was the $2 billion risk worth the reward? With me to help answer that very issue and many more this hour, we have our own Rick Harrow, Bloomberg Sports Contributing Editor. And I'm going to kick it off with you, Rick. What do you think, $2 billion? I mean, how do you get to that kind of valuation? You get to that because you pay a lot more than it's worth on a cash flow basis, but you mind history. And if you take a look at some of the numbers, and the Astros gives you a good example of that perspective. John McMullen bought the team for $19 million in 1979, sold it for $115 million in 92. Drayton McLean bought that team then and then sold it for $680 million in 2011 wow. to a buyer. And Chicago and Oakland and Atlanta all went through that sale trail. It's a vanity play. It's like buying the Mona Lisa. That sets the stage for the entire conversation because it's not really, de it defies traditional economic analysis. Okay. CEO of Horo Sports Ventures, Rick received a law degree from Harvard Law School where he also earned his nickname, The Sports Professor. Rick is the host of Beyond the Scoreboard on the Nightly Business Report and serves as a sports business analyst for Fox Sports, Bloomberg TV, Bloomberg Business Week, and the BBC. Miami owner Steve Ross no longer holds the record for paying the most money for a U.S. sports franchise, but he's still impatient to turn his $1.1 billion investment into a winner. The draft is his next big opportunity. How do you feel about running a business where player selection, in a lot of ways, is, is based on luck? Oh, Andrew Luck, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Rick is also the author of the groundbreaking books, When the Game is on the Line and Beyond the Scoreboard. Through keynote presentations, consulting services, and his weekly commentaries on CNN, CNBC, and Fox Sports, Rick details his strategies for successful negotiating, consensus building, forming productive partnerships, and leaving a lasting legacy. It's beyond the scoreboard. Here's Rick Harrow. The NFL is the only major sports league that doesn't currently allow casinos to advertise in its stadiums. However, all that could change as early as this week if NFL team owners vote on the issue as expected. The most valuable of all U.S. sports properties, the NFL over the years has taken a conservative stance on gambling. The league believes limiting casino advertisements distances itself from the gambling industry. He customizes his message to fit your specific need for an opening or closing keynote address, a half-day seminar, or a small group consulting setting. He draws upon current issues from the national and international stage to local controversies and ties them back to your organization's reality. Don't take criticism and failure personally. It's a very important message. I've failed five times more than I've succeeded. But to put setbacks in discrete compartments and move on is more important than anything else. One of my heroes growing up was Jack Nicholas. My d first daughter was born the day before Jack won his master's in 1986. She doesn't really remember it. I can't believe she doesn't, but I but, uh, was actually you know, scoring at home the, uh, when she was one day old. And Jack Nicholas was a hero, so when he came to me and said, I want you to run Golden Bear Sports Management, I was flattered. And I didn't know what that meant, but uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't quit the rest of my day job, but ended up helping him define an expansion in his business. Wrote him a memo and said, Jack, you're going to have some problems because people are going to use you in the agency business because of your name. They're going to take advantage of you. You're going to require a lot of money to recruit, even at your level. And third is you're not going to get automatic endorsements for kids just because you're you. They'll endorse you, but not kids. So you're going to lo lose a lot of money initially. Nah, you know, go run the business. Six months later, I get his lieutenant, not even him, a pink slip. Why? He's lost a lot of money, people are using him, and he's got to recruit in ways he didn't want to. Now, you know, you could cry and you can move on and you can say, this is a terrible thing and I hate these kind of setbacks. And I did a little bit of that. But you've got to be able to compartmentalize. You've got to be able to bounce back. And my bounce back in the golf industry was working with Greg Norman and helping him turn his business into a $600 million net worth business and now working as a commentator with the 
Golf Channel and talking about different businesses in golf, and it takes a while, but the point is to be able to compartmentalize and move forward is more important than anything else. His clients have included some of the biggest organizations and companies in the world of sports and business. NFL, Major League Baseball, NASCAR, PGA Tour, Great White Shark Enterprises, Cisco Systems, Golden Bear International, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the LPGA Tour, and Major League Soccer. Rick has developed a set of proven principles that provide his audiences with business play-by-play -play replete with personal examples. He delivers not only winning solutions, but also win-win options. While other speakers talk about leadership, Rick models it. Get up off the canvas. Commit to an intense mode of action. Stay consistent in times of maximum adversity. And the time to be a star in life is not at the peak but in the valley. Um, I have been at my best after a loss. Everybody can be really good after a win. I've been personally involved in 35 public referenda stadium processes, and in every single one, there was a specific, tragic, irrevocable, cavernous loss in some point in the process where other people would have walked away. Do you remember what, he, what Woody Allen says? He says 90% of success is, is just showing up. And I think a lot of that has some relevance to dealing with the whole business life and sports life. In Cincinnati, when I was working with Mike Brown, the owner of the Bengals, any Cincinnati Bengal fans in here? That's part of the problem. I don't see too many hands. And I understand. Mike Brown had a personal approval rating of about 7%. And let's just remember at the time, Ayatollah Khomeini had an approval rating of about 8.5%. So we have to deal with how to move the situation uh, to the point of being tolerable. And it was, we're going to divorce you from the campaign. It's not about the Bengals. It's about Cincinnati infrastructure taking money from Indiana and Kentucky and bringing it into Ohio and on and on and on. Divert the message. We got the Bengals a stadium. They got public money. They got better. They're still not great. But the point is, this is at the point where people maximize their benefits. At the moment of highest risk is the point where you should shine. And the buzzword? Consistency. Consistency coupled with tenacity.